أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي In our previous session we finished off with giving the definition of the word hadith in its technical usage and so we concluded that the a summary of the definition that is given for the word hadith in its technical usage is that it represents the sayings, the uh, actions and also the approval or the disapprovals of the Holy Prophet Al-Qawl wal-fi'l wal-taqreer where it's probably the last one, the third one, taqreer or the tacit approvals of the Holy Prophet that would be a little bit difficult to comprehend. But basically all it means is that it's all of his unspoken actions and unspoken approvals of the actions of others. Where if something was to happen in front of him, it is of course the, the infallible's duty to respond or react. If it is something negative, he must react in a certain way. If it is something positive, then of course, there is no need for the infallible to react or say anything. So it is his endorsement of that action that is being performed in front of him. Now, there are many other words that are used in equivalent to the word hadith. Of course, some of them more or less do have different definitions, but we can keep it with the summarizing of the dif different definitions that are given to these words and say that all of them, one way or another, do point towards the same meaning of hadith. Like, for example, we have among the different words that are given as a synonym, if we could say, for the word hadith is sunnah. Of course, many say that the word sunnah encompasses a more general meaning than the word hadith because it could also include the uh, behavior or, or the conduct of the infallible. However, referring back to the textbooks that are written on the science of hadith, we can conclude that it does carry more or less the same meaning of the word hadith. And in many times it is used in place of the word hadith. Another word that is used is the word riwayah. And this again means hadith. Ruwiya an fulan, for example, or al rawi. And rawi, of course, means narrator. Ruwiya an, as, as you sometimes see in the beginning of certain traditions, means it is narrated from. And riwaya means the narration or the tradition. Then another word is the word khabar. Then we have another word again, athar. And again, these two along with riwayah and along with sunnah also come to mean the same word as hadith. And this is, you must have heard of this before in when, you, when you've read books or when you've heard certain lectures and that is hadith 
قدسی Of course the word hadith itself is the same usage as uh, anywhere else where it is a tradition however when it says hadith qudsi it is different to any of these words and the reason is because when we say uh, a riwaya when we say a sunnah or when we say a hadith what we mean is we are referring to the very saying of the holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, or any of the other infallibles alayhim salam but it is their own uttering whereas when it comes to hadith qudsi we are narrating it from one of the infallibles which is going back to the narrating of the holy prophet peace be upon him however the Holy Prophet is attributing this saying from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where the Holy Prophet says, Qal Allah. Now, this is different, of course, you, you need to understand that this is different between a verse from the Holy Quran. Because in the Holy Quran, we can't say that the Holy Quran is a hadith or it is a sunnah or it is a riwayah or anything else. It, it, it is an ayah, a verse from the Holy Quran. And of course, it is a saying from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas the hadith Qudsi, even though it is attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is said by the Holy Prophet outside of the Holy Quran. So basically, Hadith Qudsi means that it is a saying from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but not a part of the Holy Quran. Of course, one shouldn't misunderstand this and say that, oh, does this mean that there are extra things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that um, should have been a part of the Quran and isn't a part of the Quran? Absolutely not. Hadith Qudsi is only something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed or inspired to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, where the Holy Prophet with his absolute knowledge of the Holy Quran and the completion of the Holy Quran of course in, in, the, in our belief the saying that the Holy Prophet is uh, quoting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that, had, that was inspired to him but is not a part of any surah or verse of the Holy Quran. And this is why we call it Hadith Qudsi. Quds, Qudsi, of course, as you know, comes from the word Muqaddas or Qadasa, which means sanctity and sacred. Now, one important point that needs to be made is in regards to the word Sunnah. And if you were to look at the usage of the word sunnah in our daily life, we can see that the word sunnah in its general sense, which could encompass other aspects outside the holy utterings of any of the infallibles, in its literal meaning, the word sunnah could refer to the acts of people. And this is why, according to the famously narrated tradition, where it says, "Man sanna sunnatan hasanatan, falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha ila yom al qiyamah." He who introduces or performs a righteous or a positive or a good uh, sunnah tradition will be rewarded that, and also will be rewarded for anyone that performs and undergoes this tradition that he introduced until Judgment Day. But at the same time, it says, وَمَنْ سَنَّ سُنَّةً سَيِّئَةً فَلَهُ وِزْرُهَا وَوِزْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Where whoever introduces an evil, a bad tradition, a bad practice, then he will have its uh, punishment and the punishment of any of those who perform it until Judgment Day. Looking at the word Sunnah here, 
where there is positive sunnah and negative sunnah and sometimes the negative sunnah could also mean bid'ah or innovation. We are not using that usage the same way as we are using it here in the science of hadith. When we refer to the word sunnah, we are referring to the word sunnah in the technical sense that exists within ilm al-hadith, the science of hadith. It is also not referring to any other meaning that the word sunnah could carry. So this is an important point for you to, to keep in mind. And of course, um, inshallah, with your further studies on this subject, you will also be able to uh, find out that there might be some slight, um, very delicate uh, d distinguishing differences between um, the five different words that are used uh, in this science for the same meaning and also the different views that different ulama have when it comes to the def defining of these words and also their usage for it. And this is where we come to the importance of learning the validity of the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet and the other infallibles, which of course we will be discussing in our next session. And thank you very much. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.